A constitutional court has declared the Writers' Assembly Act unconstitutional and invalid insofar as it makes incitement to commit even minor crimes an offence. That's because parts of the Act are inconsistent with the section of the Constitution dealing with freedom of expression. The ruling was handed down by the Constitutional Court today, or yesterday rather, after the EFF asked the Conk Court to uphold a High Court ruling that a section of the Act was unconstitutional. However, handing down judgment Chief Justice Mokhweng Mokhweng, who penned the majority judgment, also said the court held that the meaning of the word libel in Section 18.2b of the Act does not connote absence of judicial discretion. Sinao Otambo is head of presidency in the EFF. He joins us now. So, Mr. Otambo, just to share with us your perspective of uh, these two rulings that I mentioned. The Writers' Assembly Act, including the occupation of land with regards to the Trespass Act. Do you see it as you've scored a victory and a loss, or how do you see it? So we see it as an absolute victory in terms of the EFF being vindicated that apartheid law is inconsistent with a modern democracy. So it's a historic judgment that the Economic Freedom Fighters welcomes, which invalidates a law which in itself states that its intention is to prohibit the engendering of hostile feelings between Europeans and native Africans. And uh, the fact that the, the ruling part, the current regime, sustained this law within this current era just reveals that there is a commitment to a social cohesion which lacks, subten which lacks substance, a social cohesion which lacks justice, and the economic freedom factors is, of course, vindicated in this fact. And, of course, more importantly and pointedly, it means that the case against the frivolous case against the commander in chief Julius Malema can no longer stand because it was based on an unconstitutional, despotic, and regressive law which was adopted by a violent racist regime of apartheid. Mm -hmm. so we welcome. And I'm going to ask this question without making any assumptions because uh, we're reading it and not necessarily being legal experts ourselves, but I will ask for clarification. So there's uh, this in two parts, obviously. It has to do with the Trespass Act and the occupation of land. Uh, the business group, Psyche Liga, for instance, uh, says it welcomes the findings as well, uh, saying that trespassing remains a crime. And that also has to do with uh, what the Chief Justice Mokhweng Mokhweng said about Section 18.2b of the Act, about the word libel, that it does not connote absence of judicial discretion. So talk to us about your reaction to that. Are you still going to fight it? Absolutely. And also in our understanding of land redress that ought to happen in this country, firstly at, our, at a legislative level, which is the expropriation of land without compensation. And of course, the occupation of land as a manifestation of this legislation and policy perspective of the EFF. We don't have any understanding of trespassing when our people occupy land. We said uh, our people, if they see a plot of land which is vacant, they must occupy it for purposes of settlement, for purposes of agricultural development. So trespassing is not a lexicon that we subscribe ourselves to. So we will be challenging that uh, because in our understanding, the occupation of land is a response to social distress in this country and a historical injustice, which is the original sin of dispossession. Mm. So we don't in that framework and of course we will be challenging it in that regard as well but of course it's a big step the ruling is a, is a first step towards what we will be fighting for a total repeal of all apartheid laws so we're going to take it in a step-by-step -step process we are not phased by that so we welcome the gains that we are able to make Mm. And for ordinary South Africans, I mean, it is a very complex legal matter. You spoke about the victory, especially from a, a progressive political transformative perspective, but then you also spoke about freedom of expression. But your opponents were also accusing the EFF of trying to run away from culpability of what it sees as criminal act using freedom of expression as a crutch to do so. It's absolute nonsense. That's what we will just take uh, that perspective as. In our understanding, no law can exist out of political persuasion, and all law must be underpinned by a political spirit, especially in a country like ours, which comes from a dark history of colonialism and apartheid. Apartheid laws were drafted under the auspices of particular politics. And of course, the laws that we have to draft as a new democracy, as a country that seeks to ensure that the wealth of the land is within the hands of the majority of the people, our laws must be in line with that political ethos and that political spirit. So, of course, we understand that the law in its current state 
is not ultimately progressive. There has to be reform within it, and that reform must come with a political understanding of the situation in South Africa, in Africa, and the historical conditions that have dictated the social and economic uh, realities of our people. So we don't take seriously any deeming of uh, criminality, because if you look back into history in any epoch, a lot of injustice was a legal process. Apartheid was legal. The persecution of the Jews was legal. Uh, the treatment of black people, slavery, was a legal process. And this had to be fought at a political level. And then that polit those political aspirations had to be transformed into the legislation of any country and any land. Mm. So a law does not necessarily mean it is right in its current state and form. It has to be underpinned by politics. And this so let's talk so about that. Let's talk about that process going forward because the Constitutional Court has now deferred this matter, especially when it comes to the Writers Assemblies Act and how it's written, the broad nature of it being out of step, as you say, with the current political situation. How can it then be best used to progress the lot of the majority of South Africans moving forward? If we're going to talk about academic freedom, scientific research, all of those things that were noted. Well, the Economic Freedom Fighters has been involved in a process of firstly repealing all apartheid laws. This was opposed in Parliament, uh, but the first step for all of us is, of course, to take this to the highest legislative decision-making body in the country, which is Parliament in itself. And we'll be doing this through motions to repeal specific laws and, of course, to amend specific laws in the same way that we're doing with uh, Section 25 of the Constitution in terms of land expropriation without compensation. So that's the avenue that we're going to be using, and we've declared this that in the first quarter of Parliament next year, we will be re reintroducing the motion of repealing of apartheid laws, and hopefully the African National Congress and parties within Parliament will have an appreciation of the need to, to, to change these laws and remove them from our legislative fabric. They are not consistent with an aspiration of having a country that is sustained on social cohesion, and of course, get rid of the hostility between races in South Africa. The only way we're going to change the social incohesion in South Africa and the hostilities amongst our people is social redress and justice. And this is a demand for equality, in essence. So that's the only way we'll be able to achieve okay. a united South Africa. So no. by, through a these laws through those processes. Thank you so much for taking the time to speak to us. Uh, now, Tambo is uh, the EFF's head of uh, presidency. Now, moving on to other news. All right, uh, coming up, 